The Soyuz uh, nearing uh, its touchdown point southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. And we're standing by for touchdown. The Soyuz is home. Touchdown confirmed at uh, 4.15 a.m. Central Time, 3.15 p.m. at the landing site in Kazakhstan. Tim Copra, Tim Peake, and Yuri Malenchenko are back on Earth after 186 days in space, the same number of days aboard the International Space Station. The Soyuz has landed. Let's have a look at some, uh, I think we can go to some live pictures now. Well, there we can see them on the ground. They're out of the Soyuz capsule. And, uh, and uh, Tim Peake, uh, the first British astronaut to fly on the International Space Station. Peake uh, completing uh, his first mission. Malenchenko completing six flights into space and a total of 828 days away from the planet second most on the all-time list behind uh, fellow cosmonaut Gennady Padalka. Nice sunny afternoon on a Saturday in south central Kazakhstan as the the landing occurred uh, right on target. The crew uh, now uh, being attended to uh, by uh, flight surgeons and uh, nurses which is a standard procedure as uh, they have an opportunity uh, to get their land legs back. Tim Peake, you might have noticed, still smiling there as we listen into the NASA commentary. He's obviously uh, wiping some of the sweat off his face. He'll be in that uh, rather warm suit for a little bit. And uh, he almost looks like a man on a deck chair. He's clearly had a good, a good holiday. Been on ever, said Tim Peake. It's just been fantastic from start to finish. Tim, David Trumpel over here. Tim, David Trumpel, welcome back to planet Earth. Thank you, David. Great to see you looking so well. Just tell me how you're feeling right now. Uh, just truly elated. I mean, just the smells of, the, of Earth are so strong. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just wonderful to be back. The fresh air. Listening to an impromptu news conference from Tim Peake. I'm not sure how much you can hear, but he said he's truly elated. The earth smells so strong, and he looks forward to some cool rain on his face. And I suspect when he gets back home to uh, the United Kingdom, that can be arranged. Uh, Palab Ghosh is uh, watching those pictures along with me uh, from Mission Control. Palab, I mean, that was Tim Peake as, as we know and like him, smiling, happy, very, very upbeat. Wasn't he cool? It doesn't seem like just a few moments ago he was orbiting the Earth, uh, but he's landed, he seems happy, relaxed. In fact, he got in touch with us just before he set foot in the Soyuz capsule. He said how much he was looking forward to coming home, and he promised to chat to us uh, when he arrived. And true to that promise, 
he did that. I and mean, hasn't he been such an inspiration? The first spacewalk by a, a British astronaut uh, controlling a rover from outer space, inspiring school children. I mean, his uh, activities have inspired more than a million school children across the UK. And it really is a thrilling moment. I'm sure this isn't the end of his mission in many ways. He will be back in the UK in a few weeks' time. There were a few formalities, but I know that he's keen to continue to inspire school children. He did say he will miss the view, but I suspect uh, the cool rain might make up for it. And he did seem, as you say, very, very pleased and happy with how the whole 186 days has gone. Well, there's a saying, when astronauts are up in space, they want to be back on Earth, and when they're back on Earth, they want to be back in space. So I'm sure Tim's got mixed feelings. He'll desperately want to see his family. He's a, a great family man, but he was so much looking forward to being up on the space station. He did so much seem to be enjoying himself, so I'm sure he's looking for another mission as soon as he can. We're watching pictures of Tim Copra coming out, the American from the, the space station. Uh, and, and again, they, maybe you could talk us through what is actually happening now. There's some medical tests, but wh why don't they take the spacesuit off them more quickly, given that it's obviously very hot there? Well, there's a procedure. What they want to do is to make sure that the astronauts are OK. They're currently acclimatising to gravity. They're acclimatising... I mean, they've been shaken uh, to pieces by that landing, so they need to settle down a bit. Um, they're having their heart rate monitored with little things on their fingers, but it won't be long. Uh, after they've made their calls home, they'll, they'll each be handed phones before they're taken to a medical tent. And, look, Tim's probably phoning Rebecca and the boys, saying, I'll be home for Father's Day, no doubt. Um, and uh, then very soon he'll be taken to uh, uh, an airport in Kazakhstan and make his way to Cologne, where that's, that's where he's probably going to meet his family uh, and then going to give a news conference next week. Well, we can see that uh, he's on the phone now, and I suspect he must be on the phone to his family uh, straight away as his, as his first uh, priority. He said uh, this was a life-changing experience, and let's talk a little bit more about how what he has done may change things here, because there have been some people who think that space has been a kind of poor relation, governments have not been that interested, it costs a lot of money, what's the point, that kind of argument. Do you think Tim Peake has done a lot to reverse that? Well, the, uh, there's a generation, myself included, that was inspired by the Apollo program. It made me want to study science. And the sense is that Tim has done the same with a new generation of school children. They've been so engaged with his experiments, so engaged with his missions. And uh, perhaps the government may have seen the value in human spaceflight. Some argue about the value of the actual science that's being done, but the uh, inspirational value speaks for itself. If uh, a number of children do study science, gain an interest in science that otherwise wouldn't have, then the um, estimated £80 million pounds that it costs to send him up there Continuing might be seen as worth it. Pala, uh, we'll leave it there and I'll bring in Professor Lucy Green again and Rebecca Morell, uh, just for some, some thoughts on that. Uh, Lucy, in terms of uh, the inspirational bit, do you think it will inspire politicians? <laughs> <laughs> politicians are harder to inspire than young children, I think, because they actually control the purse strings. I hope that politicians see the value and I think what's important is that awareness has been raised across not only Tim Peake's mission but across the whole of the UK space sector. It employs a huge number of people and has a turnover of around 11 billion pounds a year so it's a very significant player in the global market and our aim is that we, we continue to build this program and we continue to generate more money for the economy. Space was also a recession busting industry as well so it has really shown its worth and I hope that the politicians take note of that. Uh, it's also something where we cooperate with other countries like Russia, which from time to time we don't get on with, including now in the political sphere. So is it, is it also useful in that sense? Is that a selling point to governments? Yeah, I mean, since the space race, when, you know, the Soviets and the Americans were very much kind of competing with each other to be the, the first, uh, after that, really, there, there is a real sense of collaboration up in space. I mean, think about the International Space Station, all the nations that are working together 
up there. You know, politics are left behind once you leave the Earth's atmosphere, as, as it was. And that is one of the really important aspects of this. I think we can listen in again to NASA TV. There's an interview going on. Let's, see, let's hear what's happening. Jerry Malenchenko first, Tim Peake second, and Tim Cooper third. Last but not least, all three in the chairs now. They're going to smile, I think, enjoy the weather. Their first breath of fresh air in over six months before we head over to the medical tent, which is already erected just about 100 yards away or so. Just a, a couple of absolute layman's questions. Given what it went through, is the soil actually hot? In other words, do people have to stand back uh, before opening the doors and so on? I suspect it won't be hot to touch. I think the, the heat shield that you have around the soil is, is, is designed to withstand the heat and dissipate the heat. Um, and also you have one side of the spacecraft or the soil is captured that will be heated. And so as the capsule comes into the atmosphere, it's that really that side that's, that's taking the brunt of, of, all, the, um, of all the friction and, and the heating. As, but, it, as yeah. it comes down on the parachute as well, it, 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 for the first stages, it comes down a bit of an angle, so it's not directly underneath the parachute, and that helps to dissipate some of the heat too, so hopefully it won't be too frazzled by the time it <laughs> And it comes it through very bit. cold air, presumably, in the uh, Yeah, uh, exactly. The upper, it has a bit of time to, to cool down, but the whole thing is designed, you know, this is kind of old, tried and tested technology. The Russians have done this time and time again, so they've got, you know, it's... it's, it's a simple piece of technology in some sense when you compare it to say the space shuttle that 